Assalamu alaikum. So today marks the fourth lecture of this online lecture series. Previously, uh, we've completed the introduction to anatomy. So we are go uh, going to move on to some new topics. The topic for today is body tissues. Uh, actually, we are going to study uh, the tissues first, then we'll go from system to system. So uh, I am following uh, the uh, Netter's clinical anatomy book as per the topics given in the book and making the slides according to that so you may also get the uh, get the book and uh, study it from there or you can use the uh, book by Laiko Sand for general anatomy or BD to SES general anatomy okay so let's get uh, get on with body tissues first what is a tissue tissues are a group a group of cells closely associated that have a similar structure and perform a related function so the cells having a similar structure and performing a related function such as uh, as i've already given the example of a myocyte uh, so the myocytes are similar in structure they all look the same perform the same function contraction relaxation of a, mus a muscle so they comprise a tissue there there are four total types of tissues in the body there are epithelial tissues connective tissues muscle tissues and nervous uh, tissues and uh, most of the organs contain all of these four types so what are the uh, functions of these types epithelial tissue is mainly for uh, covering uh, the organ connective tissue is for support uh, to keep the structure intact muscle tissue is for the movement of the organ uh, uh, in case of muscle for contra uh, muscle is always for contraction and relaxation in in the case of uh, uh, normal musculoskeletal system uh, like the muscles in arm and leg they uh, help us in moving forward or backward or lifting things uh, things like that on the other hand the muscles and intestines they help in movement of food uh, towards the pineal cavity nervous tissue they are for control uh, control of which thing control of muscles uh, for, for uh, our senses the sense of pain the sense of pressure touch everything else uh, those functions are performed by nervous tissues so today we are going to dis discuss epithelial tissues so what are epithelial tissues epithelial tissues are a collection of cells which covers the external surface of the body as well as the innermost the internal linings internal surfaces of hollow organs and closed serous cavities what are the hollow organs intestine is a hollow organ stomach is a, a kind of a hollow organ then there is a, what is a serous cavity pericardium peritoneum uh, pleura we've already studied these earlier these are serous cavities so the innermost lining of these cavities is via epithelium mainly its function is uh, covering and protection from wear and tear what are its characteristics the cells of epithelium are uh, highly adherent to each other are attached to each other and uh, there is no uh, ground substance uh, there is some but uh, it is very uh, low in number it is scanty mostly these are cellular it means in between the cells uh, there are very less spaces the cells are attached to each other and they rest on a tissue structure that is known as the basement membrane we'll study the basement membrane when we go further okay uh, 
epithelial tissues are derived from all three germ layers what are germ layers uh, let me explain it a bit when an embryo is developing inside the uh, inside the womb inside the uterus of the mother uh, first of all there is a fertilized ovum there is a egg then it divides into a blastomere then from uh, two cells it forms four cells eight cells eight cells is a blastomere then there are 16 24 cells and on and on then there is a 40 cell structure and it starts forming uh, a particular shape then uh, the embryo is divided into two layers then the two layers again divide into three layers the name of those three layers are these ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm all of the structures of our body they arise from either of these three layers whereas uh, epithelium arises from all of these three layers by right? because epithelium arises along with the og so the outermost layer of the skin the uh, epidermis of skin it arises from ectoderm the uh, genital tract and urinary tract arises from mesoderm that's why their epithelium arises from mesoderm too whereas the elementary tract the GI gastrointestinal tract and the respiratory tract they arise from mesoderm uh, as well as the epithelium the epithelium also arises from the uh, sorry endoderm so it arises from all of the, the three layers along with the respective organ epithelium has a very marked ability to regenerate when injured whenever your skin is injured what happens uh, there is a scar formation and the skin regenerates itself and there is healing so uh, to protect the inner workings of the body the muscles the inner linings the inner structures of the body it must have the ability to regenerate and it does have a very good ability to regenerate same as with the internal lining of uh, the organs the epithelium uh, of the organs or the endothelium of the vessels whenever it gets broken it regenerates itself very fast okay these epithelial tissues are avascular avascular means there are no blood vessels that directly supply these tissues but they get their nutrition by diffusion from underlying blood vessels um, let me see and check if there is a no there is no picture of skin okay uh, let me get get back to you on this one okay as all of you can see this is basically epidermis of skin the outermost layer of skin and uh, this is actually sorry this is skin and this is the epidermis of the skin which is composed of squamous uh, cells so as you can see the blood vessels here are limited to this layer or dermis there is no blood vessel that is going into the epidermis so how does the epidermis gets uh, uh, get its nutrition it get its nutrition uh, from from diffusion by uh, from from the dermis the nutrients they uh, diffuse out crossing the dermis crossing the basement membrane into the epidermis of the skin so uh, this was an example of 
ए वैस्कुलरिटी ऑफ द उसके ऑफ द एपिथीलियम सॉरी दे आर ए वैस्कुलर एंड गेट दे न्यूट्रिशन बाय डिफ्यूजन फ्रॉम अंडरलाइंग ब्लड वेसल्स बट दे गेट दे नर्व सप्राइव फ्रॉम द नर्व फाइबर्स व्हिच पेनिट्रेट द इंटरवल बिटवीन द सेल्स हियर वी कैन सी this is a nerve these are nociceptors so here yeah, you can see the nerve supply is present here mostly the receptors uh, are of on the skin are of touch pain pressure and temperature okay so let's get to the functions of the epithelial tissues epithelial tissues are selective barriers means they let some materials pass through the skin and some materials they do not let them through uh, such as when our body is hot uh, skin is a uh, very good example uh, of a tissue that keeps the body uh, cool how does it happen via sweating it releases the temperature out of the body but it does not let anything sink into the body uh, except water and some other substances the other function of epithelial uh, tissues is covering and protection of the internal structures uh there there is a function that is very important to the human body that is absorption what is absorption the innermost lining of the intestines of this uh, of the intestines is epithelium basically and it forms finger like projections which are known as villi these villi are, are very important for the absor- absorption of food particles when they are passing through the intestine epithelium also has a uh, important function as it produces secretions uh, flock from the glands from different glands neuroepithelium is a type of epithelium uh, that has sensory receptors the epithelium on the muscles is known as myoepithelium and it has a uh, it has a large function in the contraction whereas the epithelium in the serous uh, serosal cavities uh, such as peritoneum pleura and pericardium serves a function as a lubricant it lets the uh, heart lungs intestines expand and relax and does not let it uh rub off against the other structures there is another role uh, uh, of epithelium that is prevention of reabsorption this role is played by a transitional epithelium transitional epithelium is the epithelium that lines the urinary bladder ureters up to urethra the urine uh, from the kidneys goes into urinary bladder via the ureters transitional epithelium makes sure that that, uh, that the urine does not get reabsorbed now we are going to discuss classes types of epithelium so it can be mainly divided into two classes simple and stratified simple epithelium is the art epithelium that is just one layer uh, thick one layer or one uh, cell shape sorry one layer thick epithelium is found in uh, small blood vessels that is known as endothelium whereas epithelium consisting of just one layer is simple epithelium whereas Uh, when the epithelium is uh, composed of multiple layers 
that is known as stratified type of epithelium as you can see in these pictures okay this is the basement membrane that the epithelium rests on this is co uh, simple columnar epithelium lined in a single layer on the other hand this is stratified epithelium li lined in multiple layers stacked uh, upon each other simple epithelium has these uh, three to four types The first type is squamous epithelium. The shape of the squamous, ep uh, squamous epithelium is uh, the cells are squashed, they are flattened cells. This type of epithelium occurs in our skin. So, sorry, uh, this type of epithelium occurs in uh, the blood vessels in the skin it is a uh, keratinized squamous epithelium what is keratinized non keratinized will spread it further down the line okay so endothelium of blood vessels is squamous epithelium moreover the mesothelium what is mesothelium mesothelium is the membrane that covers the peritoneal cavity that covers the pericardial cavity the serious lining of silom silomic structures of uh, the abdominal structures those uh, the, that epithelium is known as mesothelium that is also simple squamous uh, in shape cuboidal simple cuboidal is cube shaped epithelium present in walls of different glands whereas col simple columnar epithelium is arranged in columns and uh, occurs in lining of gut tube uh, and uterine tube gut tube is intestines and uterine tube is ureters what is cilia I'll explain it right further what is cilia okay there is an epithelium that is known as pseudo stratified epithelium. Pseudo stratified uh, epithelium is an epithelium that has a single layer but that appears to be multi layered. How does it look? Let me show you. This type of epithelium is present in respiratory tract and it helps in. Uh, removing mucus and other foreign particles out of the respiratory tract the complete uh, name of this epithelium is pseudo stratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells so let me show you pseudo stratified epithelium Just look at this picture. There is a basement membrane here. On this membrane, cells of different sizes are present. Like this one, this cell is smaller in size, whereas these cells are larger. They are elongated cells. Basically, this is a single layer. But due to presence of small and large cells simultaneously, it gives the appearance of a multi-layered or a stratified epithelium. That's why it is known as pseudo-stratified. Pseudo means false. So it is false stratification. It is not true stratification. All the cells are in a single layer, not stacked on top of each other these are some, some small cells look and the next cell is a 
elongated larger one this is a super stratified epithelium okay so uh, now we are going to look at these four types the pictures of these four types square miski bordel column hai pseudo stratified this is a picture of mesothelium flattened cells are present here this is an example of simple squamous epithelium these are glands lined with simple cuboidal epithelium as you can see it is cuboidal in shape this is simple columnar epithelium as you can see elongated cells in shape of columns this is pseudo stratified one basement membrane single layer but in different shapes and sizes this is present in respiratory tract these are goblet cells goblet cells are basically present uh, inside the intestines inside the respiratory tract mostly in the respiratory tract okay now let's discuss stratified epithelium in stratified epithelium the cells have multiple layers on the base uh, there is a basement membrane then the basal cells the first layer of the cells above the basement membrane are columnar then there are some cells which are polyhedral multiple uh, with multiple heads and the cells on the top are flattened the uh, upper most cells may be living or may not be living how does uh, what does it mean let me explain the living cells contain a nucleus they have proper nutrition they multiply and do everything else whereas non living cells do not have nucleus they are dead inside the dead cells are known as keratinized cells whereas the living cells are known as non keratinized cells or skin is an example of keratinized uh, stratified squamous epithelium because skin has too much wear and tear it has to deal with the elements of the nature that's why the cells are dead in nature they are uh, they do not have a nucleus they are the first topmost layer is a uh, layer of dead cells let me show you Here you can see these smaller structures within the cells are nuclear. Whereas when you look upon the uppermost layer here, no nucleus can be seen. It is just like an amalgam of different cells. So this is the dead layer. This is the keratinized layer of skin or dry layer of the uh, keratinized squamous strat, uh, stratified squamous epithelium then there is a polyhedral cell look at this these are columnar cells the uh, this is the basement membrane here we can see the basement membrane then there are columnar cells 
polyhedral cells and dead limb of the flattened cells so stratified squamous epithelium keratinized is present in epidermis of skin and its main purpose is protection and waterproof it does not let the water inside on the other hand non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is present in the lining of the mouth esophagus vagina and anal, uh, anal canal it does have a nucleus it is uh, it, it's uppermost uh, it does have a nucleus and it is uh, a lip image okay stratified cuboidal epithelium is present in sweat glands and ovarian follicles basically regarding the epithelium we just have to remember the uh, site where a specific type of epithelium is present just like the question uh, the question in the exam would be like what type of epithelium is present in the urinary bladder you have to answer that or uh, it can be like stratified squamous epithelium uh, is present in one of the following structures and you have to answer that it's just like that okay so stratified columnar epithelium is present in conjunctiva of the eye and ducts of larger glands on the other hand transitional epithelium is present in urinary bladder transitional epithelium is a special type of epithelium that consists of 2 to 6 cell layers the basal cells are cubical middle are pear shaped surface are umbrella shaped but when they are dip when the uh, that is distended it becomes flattened these are present in the structures which come into contact with urine the renal calyces ureter urinary bladder proximal part of urethra so uh, these are the sites where the transitional epithelium is present its function is to prevent the reabsorption of the urine and distensibility uh, of mucosa when the urinary bladder is full from urine or when the urine is passing through the ureter distends gets larger in size this is transitional epithelium consists of multiple layers you cannot see it clearly uh, you may google search it you just have to remember its site and its function Okay, so now we'll take a look at where which type of epithelium is present. This picture is very very important. Try to remember it by heart. Okay, so simple squamous epithelium lines blood vessels and air sacs of lungs. Air sacs are alveoli of lungs, and it permits the exchange of nutrients, uh, waste, and gases. it is only one cell thick so uh, the permissibility is very easy the exchange of nutrients can easily takes place uh, take place so there is uh, in the case of alveoli the exchange of oxygen carbon dioxide can easily take place simple cuboidal epithelium lines kidneys tubules and glands and its function is to secrete and reabsorb water in small molecules there are simple columnar epithelium lines the digestive tract and its main function is to absorb nutrients and production of mucus goblet cells there for production of mucus so goblet cells line uh, are present in intestine gastrointestinal tract as well as respiratory tract for the production of mucus okay stratified squamous epithelium present in outer layer of skin mouth and vagina and it protects against abrasion drying out and infection the non keratinized type protects against uh drying by production of uh, secretions 
whereas the keratinized type the skin uh, protects from uh, prevention of loss of water stratified cuboidal epithelium lines the ducts of sweat glands and it secretes water and ions stratified columnar lines epididymis epididymis is a part of male uh, genital system mammary glands in females and larynx main function is to secrete mucus okay now let's uh, take a look at some of the structures so about the special features of epithelium these are uh, some of the special uh, structures that are formed by epithelium the first one is microvilli microvilli are small finger like projections finger like extensions of the plasma membrane of apical epithelial cells that increase the surface area for reabsorption uh this number 2 is a microvilli so if this epithelium is flat there is lesser area as compared to this tortuous kind of structure there is a projection and there is a uh, inversion kind of thing here uh last time we were talking about invagination that can uh, this one can also uh, uh, yeah this this one can also be known as an invagination so this is a microvilli main purpose of it is uh, to increase the area for reabsorption cilia are long hair like structures this one is a cilia cilia uh, have a whip like motion and uh, its main function is to move mucus out of the respiratory tract most later is present in respiratory tract and it removes mucus and uh, solid particles out of the respiratory tract flagella are very long extra long cilia which are present on sperms help in movement of the sperms so here see if you can identify all of these four structures by yourself the first one is a tight junction between uh, two different epithelial cells as you can see there is no extracellular material not too much extracellular material here because there is not uh, too much space the second structure number 2 <coughs> is a microvilli the third one is cilia fourth one is the basement membrane and this is what type of epithelium this is cuboidal type of epithelium okay now let's talk about the basement membrane the basement membrane uh, is an interchangeable term with basal lamina basal lamina is the sheet that is uh, present between the uh, epithelium and the underlying connective tissue this is the basal lamina underneath the basal lamina there is another fibrous layer that basal lamina and fibrous layer uh, together are known as basement membrane but these are interchangeable terms so we may use basal lamina or basement membrane any one of these two terms and the main function of uh, these structures Are to attach the epithelium with the underlying tissue. What are glands? Glands are specialized epithelial cell structures 
that make and secrete a water based substance a hormone it is known as a hormone the secretion of a gland so the glands may be of two types they may be exocrine or endocrine exocrine glands are those glands who have specialized uh, which have specialized ducts for the secretion of their hormones such as mammary gland such as salivary gland pancreas liver all of these uh, liver is the largest gland in the body okay so uh, these uh, glands have specific ducts through which they uh, secrete their uh, hormones or fluids on the other hand endocrine glands have no uh, separate channels or ducts for the secretion of uh, these fluids and they secrete them into the blood stream okay so uh basically the hormones are uh, mostly released from endocrine glands some exocrine glands may also release hormones so for example pancreas is a gland which is endocrine as well as exocrine endocrine hormone uh, so sorry exocrine hormone produced by pancreas is a very important hormone that is known as insulin have you heard of insulin insulin helps regulate the concentration of carbohydrates in the body of sugar in the body pancreas releases it into the uh, blood and it travels via blood to all the tissues and is used where wherever it is needed okay uh, so that marks all uh, for epithelium now there is a, a special thing that i wanted to uh, elaborate elaborate on uh, the word collagen will hear this word again and again so i wanted to explain it to you collagen is a type of protein it is the main structural protein present in extracellular matrix of connective tissues what are connective tissues we'll study it in the next lecture next two lectures most probably okay so collagen makes up about 25 to 35% of total uh, proteins in the, in the body made up of amino acids and it has 30 distinct types which have been identified till yet but we are mainly concerned with five types of collagen type 1 2 3 and 5 so uh type 1 collagen uh makes up about 90% of the total collagen in our body so the mostly mostly the collagen present in our body would be of type 1 type so type 1 collagen is present in bone skins uh sorry bones skin tendons vessels and organs what are vessels arteries veins etc type 2 collagen is present in cartilage which is present over the bones type 3 in reticular fibers along with type 1 fiber or type 1 collagen type 4 collagen is present in basement membrane and type 5 in cell surfaces hair and placenta placenta is the organ that is formed inside the mother's uterus to feed the uh, baby so it is it comprises of main blood supply main uterine supply of the baby so these are uh, types of collagen to rem- remember it there was a simple formula bone what are the spellings of bone b1 so b1 means bone has type 1 cartilage you can remember as cartilage c a r t w o cartilage 
type 2 collagen type 4 is on the floor so it is basement membrane the remaining is type 3 that is reticular fibers and type 5 is on the head here and placenta so that marks all for today's lecture I know uh, today's lecture mostly comprised of uh, some top topics of histology but these are very important uh, for going forward if we know tissues different types of tissues such as we studied epithelial tissues then uh, in the next lectures we'll study connective tissues it would help you a lot uh, when we are studying organs different organs because the basis of organs is the uh, different types of tissues and when the questions these kind of questions come into exam all the students say that uh, these are out of syllabus because teachers don't tend to uh, concentrate of uh, concentrate on these type uh, type of topics wo samajhte hain bachcho wale topics hain bachcho ko pehle se aate hain ye fuzul topics hain but i am starting with the basics i maine aapko pehle hi bataya tha ke easiest topics start karenge aur easiest se leke fir hard topics ki taraf chalenge to isliye main basis banane ke liye aapko ye easy wale topics pehle karwa raha hu aur bilkul baseline se start kar raha hu ठीक है यही सोच के कि अभी तक आपने कुछ नहीं पढ़ा मेडिकल रिलेटेड आपने एफ एस भी नहीं की मैं इस हिसाब से चल रहा कि स्टेप बाय स्टेप हम चलें ठीक है सो टेक केयर ऑफ योर सेल्व एंड इन शफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज पोस्ट इट इन द ग्रुप थैंक यू वेरी मच अल्लाह हाफ